Welcome to my tutorial, Hooded Eye Makeup for Mature Eyes, but Daytime Edition. Come back, stay tuned. Welcome to my channel, Clean Beauty Babe, Michelle Spieler. I'm an over 20 year professional makeup artist. I worked in Hollywood for a decade, now live on the East Coast where I still do production work, but I am here to champion and support mature women, the gals pretty much over 40, who really feel like there's no one out there to teach them and educate them and help them with products they actually need and keep them from spending money on products they don't need. So I'm so glad you're here. Please, if you um, gain value from this, please subscribe and tell your friends and family, tell other women over 40 and let's grow this really cool, awesome community of mature gals. So I have been asked for years to do a hooded eye tutorial and I put it off and I put it off and I don't know why other than, um, I don't know. I don't know why I've put it off, but I will tell you that the older I get, the more my own eyes are becoming hooded. And I kind of researched a little bit. I thought, well, why another hooded eye video, right? There's so many out there. Uh, Wayne Goss does one. I think Lisa Eldridge does one. I've watched countless. You could even Google or you can go into YouTube and search hooded eyes. Tons of stuff pops up, but I find it's all very heavy and dark. And the reason being is because with a hooded eye, a hooded eye doesn't have a crease. And so what these artists or influencers are trying to teach is how to create a crease using a dark shadow and they go pretty dark. But in my experience as a professional makeup artist, women in my chair the past 20 years, they don't want heavy dark eye makeup and yet they still have hooded eyes. So how would I teach someone in my chair to do hooded eye makeup for daytime. So this is how I'm gonna treat the tutorial today. Imagine you are in my makeup chair and I'm talking to you like we are one-on-one -on -one and I'm not super rehearsed and I don't even have all the products at hand. So, you know, bear with me if I get a little fumbly because I'm really kind of going off the cuff here. It's really how I work best. I'm not into over edited vid videos, I really do best when I'm just organic and talk to you like someone who's in my makeup chair, okay? I will, um, of course, put product links in um, the show description, so you can always go on the title, click on the title and the description pops down. You will see products I used. Some might have links, some might not. Some you might wanna buy, some you might not, and that's okay. I'm here whether you buy something or not, okay? And I make pennies off of any of this anyway. So I would appreciate your support, but just know that I'm not just here to push product. I really truly only tell you about something that I personally love and use either on myself or in my pro kit. Another thing is everything I use is Clean Beauty, hence the name Clean Beauty Babe. Clean Beauty just means I use products that have low toxins that have safe ingredients, ingredients that aren't linked to endocrine, hormone disruptors, um, cancer risks, um, any neurological problems, any um, fertility problems, okay? Let's get started. So what I have put on first, and let's talk real quickly um, about the anatomy of a hooded eye. People who are born with hooded eyes, it all it means is that they don't have an eyelid, okay? I mean, they have an eyelid, but it doesn't show. And I have a good friend who is in her 30s and she's beautiful and she has a hooded eye. And the only time I see her eyelid is if she looks down and it's just this teeny, teeny little strip of skin, very tiny. If she then wears eyeliner and lashes, well, then you don't ever see her little teeny strip of um, eyelid. So that's a true hooded eye. For me, I wanna show you what's gonna happen and I can maybe even post a photo, but you can see my brow bone is now changing the shape of my eye. And I'm obviously I'm pushing that down to emphasize it. But do you see that? It is changing the shape of my eye. Now watch this. When I was younger, we'll give myself a brow lift, right? When I was younger, that's how I looked, okay? I had uh, I had a noticeable eyelid, not a huge eyelid, not a deep set eye, but I had a noticeable eyelid 
and then I had all this big brow space. So I I was kind of a makeup artist dream because I had the eyelid and I had all the space to blend shadows. And I'm really thankful for my eye. I really like my eye. I'm not interested in doing any type of surgery of any kind on my eye. What I'd love to do are the jowls in the neck. Can I get an amen? Good grief, does that draw my attention. So I think why I love doing eyes and why I love teaching eye makeup so much and why I'm such a huge fan of false lashes is because when you bring all the attention here, no one's really looking down here, right? <laughs> That's my theory at least. Okay, so you can see I have an eyelid, but as I've gotten older, look, now we can only kind of see it right through here. And then a true hooded eye, you can never see the eyelid until they're looking down. So we're gonna address that today, but we're gonna do lighter colors and we are going to omit any eyeliner on the eyelid because, I'll tell you why, because it's gonna take up space. And then when you look down, you can't see an eyelid. And I kinda wanna open that up a little bit. Um, so anyway, here's what we're gonna do. Um, so far, I have my whole face on except for concealer. I never put concealer on until I am, excuse me, until I am done with eye makeup. The reason why is because if, let's see, if we get a little tiny bit of shadow under the eye, we can whisk it away and then we put on our concealer, okay? Because concealer usually has a little bit of, you know, moistness, tackiness, and we don't want any type of shadow to fall and stick to that. So the first thing I always, always put on my eye before I start shadow is a shadow primer. This one is by e.l.f. It is called Putty Eye Primer. It comes in different colors. I don't even know what color this is because guess what? It's not on here, but it's like a skin color. It's kind of a yellowy skin color. And you have to, it's it's kind of dry, so you really have to do this. Really warm it up, warm it up, warm it up, warm it up. And then you're going to press it. Press it, not rub it in, press it. And it really helps create a very, very nice canvas for your shadows and grip them and keep them on there longer. And sometimes I'll just wear it on days where I don't wear any shadow because it, it takes away all the little veins and all the discoloration on my eyelids. I swear I wake up and it looks like I have a reddish brown eyeshadow on and I have nothing on. So we just get weird discoloration as we get older. So I love that. I'll put that, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Okay. What I want to start with, I have a couple different palettes. I, you can tell I love this. This is the Beauty Counter Classic Palette. It's a lot of warm colors. This is Mandy Moore, actress Mandy Moore's favorite. I've used this nonstop since April. I'm a warm girl, I love really warm colors. I might use a pinch of that today. If you are someone who maybe has blue or green eyes, or you have brown eyes, but you like the more pinks and mauves and like a pretty smoldery gray or a burgundy, this is really nice. But I'm not using that one today. I just wanted to show you. Today, I am going to use the Milani Most Loved Mattes. And the reason I want to use Milani is because I can make this easy for you. This palette is all matte. Whereas these palettes have a mixture of matte and, and sheen. The thing about a hooded eye is you want to knock back and you're not gonna knock back when you have a sheen. If you have a frost or a sheen, it's going to come out. Maybe we'll use a little bit on the eyelid to make it come out, but we wanna knock back the hooded part. So we really need matte shadows for that. What I like about this Milani it got exceptional reviews, but do you see how it has warms, but also some mauvies and plums, but also some neutrals? It really is warm, cool, neutral, all in one palette, and they're all 100% matte. And so I don't wanna mislead anyone today, and I really wanted to pick something that any woman could use. You could be 20 years old and use this. So we're gonna start, this is what you're always gonna start with. You're gonna start with a medium color, we're gonna do a dark color. I'm gonna stay neutral today. We're gonna do a medium color. We're gonna do a dark color in the outer crease. We might blend a little bit with this. Now what you can do is you can take a flat brush. And if you guys need help with brushes, put it in comments because maybe I just need to do a whole tutorial on brushes, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna do this light color 
quickly, quickly all over the eye. This is the lightest color. And the reason why is it's going to create a powdery canvas over that eye primer. Now that's pretty right there. Look at that. Just looks soft and creamy. Shadow blends on shadow. So if we put a medium color over that e.l.f. eye putty primer, it would probably stick and maybe look blotchy in some areas. So that's why we're gonna go all over the whole eye with this simple lightest color in the palette, like an ivory. Then you're gonna take a fuller brush. Now this one is kind of, do you see that? It's kind of flatter from the side, wider from the front. Do you see that? It's fatter. And then there it's a little bit more, it's not a full round, it's a little more like an oval round. I really like that for like the medium tones. So I'm gonna go into this one here, this medium tone right here. And we are gonna start going on the eyelid and now I have a crease, some of you have a crease, some of you don't. So you're going to just do this. You're gonna go on most of the eyelid. I'm not going inside here though, okay? So stay away from the tear duct to the middle of the iris, stay away from that. See that right there? I'm leaving that that light ivory color. But I'm going on the outer eyelid or the outer hood And then if you have a true hooded eye, you're going to blend it, not quite to the brow bone, but you're going close. Do you see that? And now we're creating some depth. Do you see the difference? We're creating depth. We're knocking back that crease where it doesn't exist. Another thing I want you to be very mindful of is I want you to take, a, a, you could take a pencil or you could take a, a brush or an eye pencil and I want you to go from the your nose to the corner of your eye to your brow. Do you see this invisible line we're gonna pretend is right here? Do not go below that. So watch, I'm gonna roll it up. Do not go below that because we want to lift the eye as we age. And it, some, one mistake I see a lot of women doing is they bring their shadow down too low and it drags their eye down, okay? So always imagine there's that imaginary line going from corner of your nose to the corner of your eye to the tip of your eyebrow. And if your eyebrow comes down too far, it's time to, to pluck that up. If your eyebrow ends between, watch this, between the ear and the top of the forehead, maybe this area, that's kind of where you want your brow to end because you want your brows to be lifted, okay? You don't want that brow coming down too far because it's gonna, it's gonna drag the eye down, okay? So, same thing on the other side. I'm gonna take that medium color, just kind of swirl it around, and I'm gonna start on the outer eyelid or the outer hood, hooded area. Notice I'm not going outside of the eye too far because I don't want to drag the eye down. And then we just keep blending upward. Does this feel easy so far? I feel like these two shadows are, I have to tell you, I've never used Milani. I just literally received this in the mail today and opened it. It got great reviews. Um, I'm pretty impressed with this. I would use this in my professional kit. It's very, very nice. Okay, and so, okay. I don't even know if we're even, are we even? So see, we still have a little bit of skin tone under the eyebrow, but we brought that medium tone up. And this is not too dark for daytime. And I'll tell you in person, 
it looks even softer than it does on video because video always intensifies and darkens everything. Just so you know, that's what high def does. This is why makeup artists have a tough time in TV and film because HD intensifies everything. Now you're gonna go back to your base shadow brush, okay? And we're just gonna blend so we don't see any edges whatsoever, okay? How do we feel that looks so far? Honestly, you could just do those two shadows and some mascara and that would be adorable because we've created some depth on a hooded eye that's gonna help knock back that hooded puffiness without going too dark for daytime, okay? Um, now, I'm gonna show you a little trick. I wanna pick something shimmery. I'm gonna pick the shimmery color. I know most women at home have a shimmery color. I know most of you, with all the makeup everyone out there has, someone has a shimmery co color. Or you could even take, let me see. I've had this product for years, so I have to be honest, I don't know how clean this product is. This is the Benefit Highbrow, okay? And I'll show you what it looks like on two different eyes. So here's another thing important for an aging or hooded eye. You want to open up this inside of the eye. You want it to be light. Look at that. Do you see how light and open that is? And then on a hooded eye, remember I was using my friend as an example. When she looks down, I see the tiniest strip of eyelid. But if she puts on an eyeliner, I don't see it anymore. We're gonna take this big fat chunky pencil called Highbrow by Benefit and we're gonna go all the way to the outer eye. And you can do it kind of thick. See, do you see from here how now that, eye, that eyelid really pops? So if I did that on someone in my chair with a hooded eye, when they looked down, you would really notice that pretty, pretty little strip of lightness. And it just helps open the eye a little bit. You can even take it and use it a little bit under here. Isn't that great? Okay, let's say you don't wanna use a pencil. Let's say you wanna do that exact same um, trick with a, a shadow. So I'm going to take this light color called Ivory. So pretty, I wear this every day. And we're gonna go, same area, we're gonna go right in here. go underneath. I love it. And then I'm also going to take it all the way across so that when I look down, you can see a little bit of eye. Do you see that now? How now my eyelid pops more? So you have two methods you could use. You could do a fat, chunky, light pencil. It could be pearly or matte. What I like about the highbrow is it doesn't have a frost. It just is like a, it's like a pearly pink light. It's like a white pink, but slightly pearly. And then this is more of a frosty ivory. Either one works. And sometimes it just depends what I grab. Honestly, sometimes I'm just whatever I feel like I grab. Okay. So we only have on two shadows. We're gonna go in with a little bit of a darker shadow to create even more of a crease. And I promise this is okay for daytime. We are gonna go in. Now I could use any one of these dark colors down here, but I'm gonna go with this neutral chocolate brown. It's very neutral. This one has more plum, this one has more red. And I am using a pencil brush. Do you know what a pencil brush is? And now we're gonna create, okay, see how when my, when my eyelid was cutting off, remember my eyelid was kind of dropping into my shape and cutting me off, and you could see a little flap of skin color. Um, it was just a flap, I had a flap hanging on my lash line, and I have it here too. But now what this is gonna do, this darker color, it's going to conceal that little flap 
that lays right above our lash line and it's gonna knock it back. That's why we use mats. We wanna knock back that little flap of skin so it looks like it's deeper in our crease and not like jumping out at you like, oh, here's a flap of skin hanging on my lash line, okay? We're gonna do this. We're gonna go outer corner, okay? Now don't be scared if that's too dark. So do you see I've created a C? It's like a little C, okay? And I know you're probably thinking, well, what about under the eye? We'll get to that in a minute. Created an outer C. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more shadow and I'm gonna do it on this side. I'm gonna go in right here and I'm gonna create an outer C. And just so you know, ladies, we all have asymmetrical faces, okay? You might never have the most symmetrical eye shadow. It's okay. As long as it's close, we're the only ones that know it. Okay, do you see that? Look at now how I look like I have an, a bigger eyelid because of that dark color framing the outer eye. Now, I do have a little bit of an eyelid, okay? I do, I'll admit that. For a true hooded eye, you wouldn't see that little bit of eyelid, but what we, what you would see is see that depth right there? It looks like a deep crease. And then you're not gonna see that flap of skin laying right on your lash line because now you've knocked it back with dark. Isn't that a great optical illusion? And guess what? Even in person close up, it still is an optical illusion. It still looks great. We're gonna take the same dark color, the same dark brown with a little angle brush and watch this. We're gonna just pat it in the outer eye and then slowly pat it in and that's it. I don't rub it, I just start here. I pat it to connect it to this outer eye, but look, watch this. We're still keeping it lifted. We're keeping it inside, right? So we're keeping it lifted. See how lifted my eye looks? We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Dab this. I just literally do this, watch. Tap, tap. And then I go on this side and I go in the outer corner and then I just keep tapping it to about the center of the eye. Then you can take your little brush, remember the brush that had the light, light, light color on it, and you can go over the middle and you've got this beautiful airbrush or ombre effect. You could do the same with the pencil. You could take the pencil, go over just that little middle section, and now you've got an ombre or airbrush effect, so you're not just seeing like, boom, here's where it stops. It's gradual but see how it lifts and then let me see close up I don't have too much spillage I don't have too much fallout from the shadow there might be a little bit right here and I'll show you in a minute how I use to clean up shadow rather than um, you can also always use one of these but sometimes you'll have shadow just sticking and it doesn't want to budge I'll show you what I use it's a trick Okay, now you might be thinking, well, Michelle, that's not really blended, right? It's not, that's not blended, that's not blended. So we're gonna go back to this fluffy brush that we put the medium shadow on with and we're not gonna re-dip it. We might, but right now we're not. And we're gonna go into that dark color and, hold on, and going back and forth like a windshield wiper We just blended it. See how this one's not really blended? And that one's blended now, okay? So we're gonna go back on this eye. Remember, I didn't have to re-dip this into the shadow. I just used this medium brush, this medium shadow brush, and I'm going back and forth. I love that. Do you guys love that? Now you can also take your 
flat brush that we used for the first step and you can always do this so that you don't see any type of lines. You see how lifted that is? And do you see how my eyes look deeper set now? It's amazing, it really works. Now, because I care about you gals with true hooded eyes, I don't wanna create any eyeliner up here because it's gonna take away what little tiny bit of eyelid you wanna flirt and show. So we're gonna do something different and easy. Some of you may have done this, some of you may not. This is the e.l.f. Black No Budge Eyeliner. I don't know if it does if it budges or not, but it's a good price and I like e.l.f. They're cruelty free and they're clean, most of it. This is black. The reason I'm choosing black is because it's going to match our lash line. It's going to match our mascara and you are going to take it and wait till you see the difference. We wanna keep that little tiny bit of eye shadow, that light color, we want that to show, right? So we're gonna go up into our lash line, our water line. This is called a water line. We have the water line here, but what most people neglect is putting eyeliner up here. Ah, look at that. It looks like I have eyeliner, but look, I didn't take any of my light lid space. So I have eyeliner, my eyes look defined without taking up space, okay? And women are always asking me, I don't know how to use eyeliner. Do I use liquid? Do I use gel liner with a brush? Do I use a pencil? Nothing stays, it moves around, it gets all over the place. Gosh, could this be easier? Anyone can do this. Don't poke your eye out, get a little practice, but it's super easy. You're just little, you're just kind of going back and forth and wiggling it right where the lashes grow out. Look at that. Wasn't that easy? And then here's what I love. Because our water lines come together in no time at all, you're gonna get a little bit of that black down on this water line without having to put any black on your lower water line and it just further defines the eye. I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, we're gonna do some mascara because we want to lift everything. Ladies, if you do not have a magnification mirror, get yourself a magnification mirror. I mean, how do you not have one? You have to. If you're in your early 40s, you might want like a five times magnification mirror just for doing eye makeup. You probably don't need it for anything else. Maybe the occasional whisker. Um, this is maybe a five, but my I stole my mom's when my mom passed away and I stole my mom's and it was a huge one that you suction cup to the mirror. And it is a 10 times. And let me tell you, it's a lifesaver. Okay, this, um, I don't know if you've seen some of my videos, but this is my favorite eyeliner, I mean, my favorite mascara I've ever used. I'll tell you why, a couple reasons why this is my favorite. Number one, it's clean. It scores like a one or a two on um, ewg.org. So the lower the scoring means the safer it is, the lower in harmful toxins. Another thing, I've used this mascara almost daily since June, and here it is the beginning of November, maybe July, I don't know. I use this in the summer and I've used this in the fall, and I still have a ton of it left, and it really lengthens. It's called, Thrive only makes one mascara. It's called Lash Extensions. It is so lengthening that when I wear it, people ask me if I have fake lashes on. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Here's another thing I love about it. You don't need anything heavy duty to take it off. It's warm water removal. So listen carefully, because what I will do is I might use a cleansing oil all over my face. I might use a little cleansing oil on the mascara, but it doesn't do much to remove it. I take warm water in my hands and I hold my eyes in little pools of warm water for just like, you know, 10, 20 seconds. And then I do this and these little tubes of mascara come off your lashes. It's easy, easy, easy warm water removal. I absolutely love 
Thrive Cosmetics. They also make my favorite bronzer that I'm wearing, which is Rhea Matte. The reason I like matte is because it um, will lightly, lightly define. I always put it under here. I do my jowls, I do my cheekbones, I do my temples. It knocks back because it's a matte, not a sh there's no sheen to it, and it's soft and it blends beautifully. Again, a clean product. Thrive is all clean products, all safe. So um, I can put that code in the show description too. I don't know why I keep calling this a show, it's a video, but you know what I mean. I'll put it in the video description because the Thrive Mascara and the Thrive Bronzer are really impressive, very, very impressive. And one thing I love is everyone who has purchased it has come back to tell me how much they love it, and that means a lot to me. That means a lot to me. When I get feedback from women, when they take the time to say, oh my gosh, you're right, I absolutely love it, I'm like, okay, cool, uh, then I know it's a hit. It's not just me, it's a hit. But listen, I've tried everything under the sun. I've been a professional makeup artist for well, since 92, but I say 20 years instead of, I've probably been more like a makeup artist for 30 years, really. I'm hard to please. Look at that. Look at that. And my eyes are defined, but I didn't take up that lid space with eyeliner. What do we think, ladies? I'm excited. Okay. Now, I wanna show you another little trick. I just found this at the drugstore a couple weeks ago. It's the Neutrogena Makeup Remover Eraser Stick. Look at this, it's got a little ball on it. So watch this, I have a little bit of shadow here. And then I'll take a little Q-tip. Somewhere in here, I have a see, I told you I wasn't super prepared. I'll take a little Q-tip. And what else is good about this is now it leaves this nice little sheen and hydration under my eyes. So now when I go in to put my concealer on, all right, I'll put concealer on, I'll be right back. Okay. And there you have it. I put on my beauty counter concealer. Did you guys see my top four concealers for mature skin or mature eyes? If you haven't, go watch it. Beauty counters in my top four. It's more medium coverage and because it's almost evening and I'm going to take this off in a few hours. I just went with a medium coverage, but it looks very glowy and pretty. And then I did some mascara on my lower eyelids or my lower lashes. So I feel like my eyes look very lifted. Um, I feel like my crease looks deeper and you can still see the tiniest bit of eyelid because we put a light color there and put the liner now on the inside of the rim of the upper waterline. Let me know if that works. Let me know what you think. Remember, it's just three shadows. We always want to start with a light shadow just to prep the eye so everything else blends beautifully. I went with a medium shadow kind of all over but avoiding this inner eyelid and then the dark shadow in that outward C shape and then re-blending everything. And then I took a light color. I don't care if it's a light pencil, like a fat chunky pencil or some kind of light shimmery color that you have from another brand. Um, and then go in that inner corner and the eyelid rim so that you kind of open up what little eyelid space you might possibly have. I hope that helps. Again, this is for a daytime look. I didn't want to do anything too dark and heavy. I think this looks very natural and very pretty. And in person, it looks even softer. It's way softer in person. Now, for evening... If you're interested in a more evening eye for hooded eyes, let me know in comments. I'm happy to do one for evening eyes. And I really love eyelashes on a hooded eye. Eyelashes on a hooded eye bring a lot of beautiful depth and attention to the eyes um, and kind of extends the eyes. And because lashes come up, they hide some of the hood and I think it is a game changer for, for hooded eyes. And guess who can teach you how to put on eyelashes? I've been wearing eyelashes since 1989. 
I started teaching women how to do lashes in the 90s. I was the only makeup artist in Nordstrom that knew how to do lashes, so everyone came to me. And by the time I got to MAC Cosmetics in Beverly Hills in 99, I was doing a ton of lashes on women all over Los Angeles, and that's how I fell into television. They loved how I did their eyes, and they're like, hey, we want you to cut, boom. Eyelashes opened the door to my TV career, okay? Well, it was really God, but you know, he used eyelashes. So I can teach eyelashes very simply, and I do need to do an updated video on how to do easy lashes. Once you learn the few simple tricks, you are going to do them for life, and you will love me for it, because I'm telling you, I'm a teacher, and I'm all about no nonsense. Let's do this fast and easy, okay? Thanks, everyone. Thank you for your support. I'll put all the links in, com or in um, the show description, and please tell other women over 40 about my channel. Let's grow this, because the more I grow this, the more feedback I get, the more videos I can make to help you. This is about you, not me. Bye for now.